On this week's episode, we take a look at the upcoming Ben Affleck Batman film. America declares war on space. I know, trust me, as much as I wish that I could just chop that up as fake news, I, I can't. It actually happened this week. And finally, just when you thought Dead or Alive, the video game, couldn't get any weirder, surprise, it gets a whole lot weirder. All this and more on this week's episode of The Nerf Report. Are you listening? Welcome to the Nerf Report. My name is Brian Chappelle. Thank you so much for being here. And let's just get straight into this week's news. We are literally four months away from the upcoming DC and Warner Brothers Justice League film. However, we're starting to get a glimpse at to what the future holds for DC comic fans. DC has plans to release solo films for The Flash, Batman, Aquaman, and Cyborg. After the success of DC's Wonder Woman, it looks like they're going all into the DC Extended Universe. DC's upcoming film The Flash, starring Ezra Miller, is slated for an unlikely release of May of 2018. And I say unlikely because this movie is losing directors faster than, well, The Flash. After losing two directors due to creative differences, Warner Brothers and DC are in talks with Christopher Miller and Phil Lord, who you might remember were released from the Han Solo Disney film for, what was it? Oh yeah, creative differences. According to The Hollywood Reporter, what will happen next for Lord and Miller isn't clear, but they're in demand, and they have an open berth waiting for them to direct The Flash for Warner Brothers if they choose to take it. The Hollywood Reporter explained they had left the film for Han Solo movie, but could return. So let, let me get this straight. Christopher Miller and Phil Lord originally signed up to do The Flash, but turned it down when Disney came to town and said, hey, How'd you guys like to do a Han Solo film? But then they got fired from the Han Solo film because of creative differences. But now they're coming back to Warner Brothers and saying like, Hey, we're back. We were just kidding. We want to direct your film. I mean, that's like figuratively going and dumping your girlfriend for the hotter girl that wants to take you to prom. But then your hotter girlfriend breaks up with you because it's a joke. And then you go back to your other girlfriend and like, Honey, you're way cuter, I promise. I want to be with you instead. This, this movie sounds like it's off to a great start. So with production of the upcoming Flash film paused, it looks like Warner Brothers is trying to find another DC property that they can accelerate production and release in the year 2018. And you guessed it, they want to do Batman. Ben Affleck's first solo Batman film is currently slated for the year 2019. However, I think if DC and Warner Brothers had their way, this thing would be releasing in fall of 2018. Uh, currently, the director for the Batman film, Matt Reeves, is promoting his current film, War for the Planet of the Apes. And in interviews, he's kind of been describing what drew him to this film. One of the reasons I was drawn to this is I had a similar fascination to Batman when I was younger that I had to the Ape series, which I was obsessed with. I see a parallel emotionally between Caesar and, and Batman in that they're both characters who are tortured and trying to sort of grapple with themselves to find the way to do the right thing in a very imperfect and to some degree corrupt world. It's really that emotionality that I'm interested in. In all of my films, what I try to do is an almost Hitchcockian sense. Uh, I use the camera and use the storytelling so that you become the character and you emphasize with that point of view. I think there's a chance to do an almost noir-driven detective version of Batman that is point of view driven in a very, very powerful way that hopefully is going to connect you to what's going on inside of his head and inside of his heart. Having the brand new Batman movie feel like a detective noir film is, is a great way to differentiate it from Wonder Woman and Superman. Marvel does this perfectly with their universe. You'll notice that the Avengers movies have a certain feel and a certain style. However, when the heroes branch off and do their own movies, it feels like their own movie. Iron Man feels like an Iron Man film. Captain America feels like a political drama or a political espionage or some type of conspiracy theory film. And if DC is able to capitalize on this and make a Batman film feel like a Batman film, 
while each and every one of the heroes have their own style, and then they bring them together for the Justice League films, they could see success with this franchise. Currently, Joe Manganiello is signed on to play the villain Deathstroke, aka Slade Wilson, and if the world's greatest assassin is gonna play opposite of the Batman, then this makes this oh so much more intriguing. Every great detective movie needs murder and a lot of it, and if Slade Wilson is responsible, there's gonna be a ton of murder. If you don't believe me, I present to you the upcoming Batman film produced exclusively for you by Nerf Report Studios. I still ask myself, Alfred, after all of these years, after all the criminals that we've put behind bars, did we actually change anything? Was it for any good? Is Gotham any safer? Or does it blindly hope that I will be there to save it? What happens when I'm gone, Alfred? No fingerprints on the bullet cases. No signs of force entry. It's the fifth assassination this week, sir. What is this? Thank you for meeting me. I'm sure you've heard by now, but there's been a series of assassinations, and we need your- I thought I made it very clear, Gordon. I'm done helping you. Gotham City PD must stand on its own. I know. But there's been five assassinations this week alone. And without your help, there's going to be more. We need your help. I'll help you this one last time. But after this, I'm gone. People of Gotham! For far too long, you've cowered under clowns and Bats. His name is Deathstroke, Slade Wilson. While your leaders paint me as the villain, the true villain of Gotham hides in his tower, Wayne Enterprises. Gordon, have GCPD evacuate Wayne Enterprises. Deathstroke is coming. The city will burn, and I will raise it from its ashes. The noble Batman trying to save the day. I'm going to destroy this city, Batman. I'll die before I allow you to do that. That can be arranged, Batman. Gotham. It's so beautiful. I, I'm at a loss of words. Like, I have always dreamed of directing a Batman film. And now that I've finally done it, well, the Nerf Report's all downhill from here. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, having a noir-driven Batman is a genius idea. And honestly, I'm counting down the days to see this film. Or I could literally just watch mine over and over and over again. I mean, seriously, DC, you can literally now fire your entire writing staff, just have them produce... The Nerf reports Batman as a real-life action movie, and hey, I'll split the commission with you. You can start sending me paychecks now, preferably in large bills, though. As a Pokemon fan, this next bit of news is probably my favorite thing ever. Uh, but in case you don't know anything about Pokemon, because... Well, you've been a shut-in for like the last 20 years of your life. Pokemon is a game where you must capture, train, and master as many Pokemon as you can. Hence the title, Gotta Catch Them All. Well, South Korea took the whole Gotta Catch Them All thing a little too seriously. During a recent raid, South Korean authorities seized 530,000 unlicensed Pokemon plushies. The Pokemon stuffed animals are being illegally used in arcade games throughout South Korea. The total stockpile is valued at an estimated six million dollars. And you said playing Pokemon would get me nowhere, Dad. Apparently I just needed to make some Pokemon stuffed animals. Comic-Con International just re-upped its contract with the city of San Diego, keeping San Diego Comic-Con at the San Diego Convention Center until the year 2021. San Diego Comic-Con on average brings 130,000 people to the San Diego area, along with bringing $130 million of revenue to the state of California. San Diego Comic-Con is literally weeks away, and unfortunately, after many years of attending, this will be the first year that I miss. Hello, 
darkness, my old friend. However, I will be there next year. I guarantee it. Who knows if the Nerf report keeps continuing to take off the way it is, we might hold a Nerf report meetup at San Diego Comic Con next year. Or, even crazier idea, Chris Hardwick. You don't have to come anymore. I'm running the Star Wars panels. Let's be honest. I think we're all tired of seeing you, Chris Hardwick. I love you, but you do way too damn much. America declares war on space. Donald J. Trump and U.S. government announce plans to branch off U.S. Air Force and introduce a brand new space corps. Americans from New York to Los Angeles have been rushing to their local recruiters to sign up to be a part of history. Go to your local recruiter and join today to defend the desert plains of Mars, liberate the moons of Saturn, and spread American democracy throughout the cosmos. America, spreading freedom at home and the cosmos near you. This week, the United States House Armed Services Committee submitted legislation to create a new branch of the U.S. military that would focus on dealing with national security issues outside of Earth's atmosphere. Democrat Jim Cooper of Tennessee and Republican Mike Rogers of Alabama described the legislation as a bipartisan acknowledgement that the strategic advantages we derive from our national security space systems are eroding. We are convinced that the Department of Defense is unable to take the measures necessary to address these challenges effectively and decisively or even recognize the nature and scale of its problems. The statement continues on by saying we must act now to fix national security space and put in place a foundation for defending space as a critical element of national security. Therefore, our mark will require the creation, under the Secretary of the Air Force, of a new Space Corps as a separate military service responsible for national security space programs for which the Air Force is today responsible. We view this as a first but critical step in fixing the national security space enterprise. Currently, there are five branches of the U.S. military. Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and the Coast Guard. This legislation is hoping that the sixth branch of military, likely called the Space Corps, will be established by the year 2019. So, aliens! If you're watching this, kindly don't attack Earth to the year 2019. Working on this week's episode, I've been reading a lot about Space Corps, and a lot of members of Congress bring up good points. The fact that, you know, we have all these satellites in space, and no one's really focusing on just protecting them. And all it really takes is like one or two satellites to be taken out, and our entire infrastructure is down. I mean, just look at your smartphone. If someone took down a satellite knocking down all smartphones in the United States, how would we live? Yes, there was a time before this beautiful masterpiece of technology existed. But let's be honest, I'm not going to go back to balancing a checkbook. I'm not going to go back to opening a map and finding out where I need to go. And if it takes the United States having a space core to keep my iPhone online, oorah. In Washington, Space Corps does have its critics. Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson had this to say, The Pentagon is complicated enough. This will make it more complex. Add more boxes to the organization chart and cost more money. And if I had more money, I'd put it toward lethality, not bureaucracy. I don't need another chief of staff and another six deputy chiefs of staff. The current Air Force chief of staff, David Goldfein, had this to say about Space Corps. Right now, as we're making this transition to get us anchored into a discussion about organizational charts, while we're right now trying to improve lethality and warfighting going forward. Quite frankly, this would slow us down. A few other articles endorsing Space Corps had kind of the same narrative, and I was kind of shocked by this. They said that with the expansion of space exploration and uh, how we're planning on colonizing other planets, someone's got to police the universe. And honestly, this is where you kind of lose me. Because when I think of planet colonization and exploring the universe, I think of that as a global issue. It should not be one country's job, or nor should one country think that they have the right to rule the universe. Also, the people writing that this is Donald Trump's agenda, and he wants to build a Death Star and rule the galaxy and rule the world. You gotta understand, the Death Star would cost like $825 quadrillion to build. We're not even talking about operate. We're talking about to build. 825 quadrillion dollars. Although I, I feel like I can see the tweet now. 
I'm going to build a Death Star so huge, it's going to be the best Death Star you've ever seen. George Lucas called me up the other day and said, Donald, how do you build Death Stars so great? And the catch is, I'm going to make the aliens pay for it. And what might be the weirdest bit of news I have ever covered on the Nerf Report, uh, Tech McCoy is announcing that Dead or Alive is coming to VR Sense. If you've never heard of Dead or Alive, consider yourself lucky, but it originally started off as a fighting game. Uh, similar to Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, or Tekken. However, after many iterations, it's evolved into a voluptuous volleyball game that allows volleyball aficionados to play volleyball. This game's really weird to me. Like, if you're a fan of the NFL, you've got Madden. If you like football, well then you got FIFA, and if you like basketball, well then you got 2K. But if you're a fan of volleyball, well we hope you like boobs too, because Dead or Alive is the game for you. Like this game probably should be labeled as softcore porn. The game allows you to compete in strenuous beach activities like butt battle, flag races, rock climbing. You can buy outfits and gifts for the girls, and well, you can also take a shower with them. It doesn't stop there. In Dead or Alive Extreme 3, it features girl mode that allows players to actually control the girls and to do whatever they want with them. Uh, there's also a photo mode where you can hold a photo shoot with your favorite volleyballer. And also exclusively to the PlayStation 4, there's tan lines and wardrobe malfunctions. In case you're at home thinking, wow, that's a really weird thing. I, I understand why it's weird. Trust me, we, we haven't even gotten to the weirdest part of this game yet. Because Denjiki Online is reporting that Tech Mokoi is bringing Dead or Alive VR to VR Sense. VR Sense is a new arcade system that provides sensory functions like heat or cold, wind, mist, and even, yes, smell. I'm sure Dead or Alive Extreme Senses will feature mist during the shower sequences and probably allow you to smell the girls. And now it's weird. While the price of the VR Sense has not been revealed, this gaming cabinet is, to me, kind of like the figurative sex doll in your friend's house. Like, there's no avoiding what that thing is used to do. <laughs> and honestly, if any of my friends own this cabinet, it would make me really question our friendship. <laughs> this unit easily is going to cost upwards of $1,500. But if you're into it, I mean, I guess you can't really put a price on touching Katsumi or smelling Helena Douglas. Please do not ask me how I know those names. That is it for this week's episode of the Nerf Report. If you made it this far, congratulations. Achievement unlocked. Thanks for staying so long. If you like what you saw, drop us a like down below. Put some comments down in the comment section. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. But more importantly, if you need more Nerf Report in your life, head on over to our Twitter, at the Nerf Report, for all your gaming, geek, nerd, and comic news. I'm Brian Chappelle. You are you, but more importantly, this is the Nerf Report. Until next time, thanks for watching. Are you listening? Damn.